Part two of Our Little Japanese Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. When Lotus Blossom was two years old, her brother Toyo was born. How the family rejoiced at having a little son. When he was only seven days old, a very important ceremony was performed. He had to receive a name. His papa, who believes in the religion of Shintoism, fully wrote out five of his favorite names on pieces of paper. Then he took his baby in his arms and, carrying the papers, he went to the temple where he worshipped. The papers were handed to the priest, who placed them in a bowl. After some ceremony, the priest began to fish in the bowl with a sacred wand. The first paper he lifted out bore the name of Toyo. This was the way that Lotus Blossom's little brother received his name. When he was about four weeks old, he was again carried to the temple by his father and nurse. The Japanese believe in one great power, or God, but under him there are many others, as a god of flowers, a god of art, and so forth. This time he was put under the care of his special god, who was then expected to protect him for the rest of his life. All this time Toyo's head was kept perfectly smooth. In fact, his first visit to the barber was very important, for all his hair was shaved off then, except a little fringe at the back and sides. When he was four months old, another important ceremony was held. Toyo left off baby clothes and was given his first solid food. That was rice, of course, which he would continue to eat at every meal for the rest of his life. Toyo and Lotus Blossom are always happy together. His sister was the first one to help Toyo squat on his little heels. Japanese babies never creep. The little brother had no baby carriage or cradle, but he never missed them. He was always such a happy little fellow. Never perched up in a high chair with his body fastened in by a wooden tray, but always moving around, sometimes fastened on mamma's or nurse's back, again on the older children's backs when Lotus Blossom was out playing in the garden with them. When he got tired, he would simply go to sleep, while the children would keep on with their play. But when he woke up, he would look about with a dear little smile, as much as to say, I'm all right, thank you, don't fret about me. It was a most important time when he cut the first tooth, and not only that, but the second and third. In fact, every tooth in turn had its arrival celebrated. A poem about each one was written by his loving papa, and a little festival was held in the home. Such happy, childlike people are the Japanese. They are ready to enjoy everything. Even the funerals are cheerful and have nothing sad and dreary about them. Why should they, when the people believe that they always will live, and that they will come back to earth again to enjoy the beautiful fields and flowers and sunshine in new bodies? Almost the first words that Toyo learned to speak were thank you and if you please. Don't think for a moment that he ever did such a rude thing in his life as to answer no or yes, without some very polite expression with it. For instance, if his mamma asked him a question, he would answer with his baby lips, No, thank you, most admirably mother, or, if you please, my adorable, honored parent, at the same time bowing his little body over till his head reached the ground. Why? He and Lotus Blossom are taught to speak respectfully, even of the potatoes or the dishes or the table. For example, they say, the highly respected cup, etc. Isn't it funny? But, after all, isn't it nice, too, to act kindly toward everyone and everything in the world? If a little brother should step on Lotus Blossom's doll and break its arm, what would she do? Give him a slap and say, oh, you bad, bad boy. By no means. A slap is unknown in her land. The little woman would not even let herself look cross or unhappy, while Toyo would spend five minutes in telling her how unutterably sad and broken-hearted he was made by his cruel and gentlemanly carelessness. And then, to make them forget all about it, Mamma would bring a new doll from the cupboard. But perhaps Lotus Blossom is tired of playthings, so she and Toyo ran out in the garden to have a frolic with the pets. They have new ones nearly every day, for they are fond of every creature that is alive. Today, they are going to hunt for some big beetles 
as though he has planned a little carriage which he will make out of paper with pasteboard wheels and reins of silk thread for the paper doll the beetles will be harnessed and the children will train them to draw the carriage jolly fun the whole afternoon is spent in finding some black beauties and playing with them another day the children will catch some grasshoppers and tame them Toyo will make a pretty paper cage to hold them while both he and lotus blossom will be very careful to feed them regularly on the dainties they like best when night comes the turtles must be looked after and fed for Toyo has some beauties he likes to fasten a string through the shell and take them walking just as his american cousins do but he would not willingly torture them lotus blossom has a globe full of goldfish different from any you have ever seen their tails are fan-shaped and are as long as their bodies during the long summer days the globe of fish is set out on the broad balcony and many children stop to watch them as they pass toyo loves his little dog more than all his other pets he is the dearest little fellow and wishes to follow his young master wherever he goes he looks somewhat like a spaniel except that he is white his nose is turned up at the end so that he looks all the time as if he would say humph i am very wise you poor people don't know much and he looks all this in such a way as to make you wish to laugh toyo's mamma has made a big scarlet ruff for the dog's neck and it makes him feel very fine i dare say his master has fastened a wooden label on his collar to tell where he belongs. I know you will be disappointed when you learn that Lotus Blossom's dear little kitten cannot play with her tail. No fun for her, poor kitty, you are thinking. But why is it? Because she has no tail, or at least only the stub of one. So of course she is quite calm and solemn, that is, for a kitten. But then she lives in Japan, and so she ought to be more dignified than kittens of other lands don't you think so we must leave all these pets now and go to church or rather to the temple with toyo lotus blossom and their parents there is no set day for worship for there is no such thing as sunday in japan the temples are always open and the children are fond of going to them to offer prayers and also to have a good time as they near the temple they see stands of sweetmeats and good things of all kinds the way is lined on both sides with these stands. Great numbers of people, rich and poor, high and low, are coming and going. Pigeons are flying in and out of the sacred building, and no one harms them. Toyo stops and buys a yen's worth of corn and scatters it for the birds to eat. They flock around him without fear. They are so tame that the children could catch them with no difficulty. But Lotus Blossom and Toyo pass on to the entrance and bowing low take off their clogs the inside of the building is almost bare there are no statues of gods or goddesses no ornaments nothing except an altar with some queer sticks standing upon it festoons of white paper hang from these wands or gohei as the japanese call them a priest stands behind the altar and a large cloth is spread out on the floor in front of it lotus blossom and toyo clap their hands this is to call the attention of the gods. Then they say a little prayer and throw some money upon the cloth. If they are very good and devout children, perhaps the gods will descend into the temple. The queer papers on the wands are to be the clothing of these great beings. No images are needed, you see, only plenty of paper. Rather hard to understand this, and yet all that is necessary for Toyo and Lotus Blossom is to worship the ancestors properly and believe that the great spirits are working everywhere in nature this is the reason they are taught to obey their parents at all times and never to harm anything living the children are also taught to believe that the mikado the emperor of japan is descended from god kings who once ruled over the country this is why such great honor is paid him wherever he goes until a few years ago the people thought him so sacred that they ought not to look at him so he was obliged to stay inside his beautiful palace like a prisoner but times have changed and his subjects have a little more common sense nowadays end of part two recording by Jule Niedermeyer.